A while ago, I made a video called how much do 3D printed miniatures cost? And it kind of went over just how fast you can go through a bottle of resin to print loads of miniatures and how much each miniature costs. And I kind of briefly went over just how long each print took. But once it's running, then you can just leave it. You know, if it takes four hours for a print, once it's actually running, you make sure it's working and then you just leave it for four hours and you, have, you get you do it again straight after. <laughs> well, the very nature of 3D printing is all about rapid prototyping. But in a world of X's and Monos and Marses and Platons and Platons, <laughs> Saturns and Jupiters. You can literally print anything you want, but how rapid is it really? Today's Monday, and let's say I was gonna go down to my local gaming store on Thursday, for example, and I wanted to play with my friend, and they didn't want to play the normal game we play. They wanted to play a new game, they've painted up a team for, and this new game, for example, is kinda like football, like American football, but you beat each other up. I've never played this game. I never bought anything for this game. Now they've got everything, but they have only got one team. So I need a team for that day to try it out. So just how fast could I take a team, print it and paint it? Could I get it ready for Thursday? I suppose we're about to find out just how fast 3D printing is. So I've got my laptop here and I've already downloaded all of the models. I didn't think that counted towards the timer, but there we go. Black Rock Killers from Torchlight Models who are sponsoring this video. And I've got, they're all pre-supported, which is awesome. And it's going to save me loads of time. I'm going to be printing them on my Mars 3. All my print settings can be found on my Discord. As long as you're a YouTube member at 3D Printer Go Burr or higher. Uh, but I'm going to be loading all these files into TT Box Pro, getting them arranged for the Mars 3. So let's start the timer. Now. Okay, first problem, there are way too many models to fit on one print. So we're going to try and optimize the print for the first set. We're probably going to have to do multiple plates for this. Okay, so I've got the first 10 models ready on the plate. Now, it's pretty full. It's not like 100% overloaded. It is pretty full, so I'm a bit nervous about this print, but we're almost six minutes in, just preparing the print. We are gonna have to do two beds though, so I'm gonna have to try and save some time somewhere. So with that, it's gonna take one hour, 49 minutes and 11 seconds to print. So we're gonna save this and go and prepare for printing. Hello. This is my print room, it's really small, it's got really bad soundproofing, the lighting's terrible. But we're going to be printing on the Mars 3 today, as I already mentioned. And obviously I do have an LU Saturn, which has a much larger build plate, which can probably fit more of the miniatures on in one go. But I don't think I can get all of them, all of them on anyway, so I still have to do two print beds. And this prints each bed faster, because it has a, a better screen. Also, it's more of an entry level printer, which means it's you're more likely to have this one than you are to have this like mid-sized printer so so we're going to be printing it on the mars 3 we're going to be washing it in the cure station we're going to be curing it in the cure station and when i'm done with my machines to save time when i do want to start a print i tend to clean them out and empty the resin already so it is all leveled and it's all clean ready to go so maybe that's cheating we're going to be printing the miniatures today in abs like resin so this is gray uh this is one of my go-to resins it's not quite as Brittle is like standard and it's also not as expensive as some of the other resins out there So if you don't want to get some resin or any of the tools I'm using today, there are links in the description to Amazon It is an Amazon affiliate link. It helps me out. So thank you in advance. So without further ado Let's get some resin on the go. Let's think about starting this print So that's uh, the printer ready to go. I should mention that I have prepped the FEP with some anti-friction dry PTFE. And it helps like release the prints because obviously of the all of the suction with such an overloaded bed, it's probably better to put a bit of lubricant on the FEP just so we do get a, a good release later. 
And so far, saying all the print, we've not had to level the bed because that was already done. We've not had to change the resin or anything like that. We're at 10 minutes. We spent 10 minutes roughly work time of setting up the prints on the, the slicer, slicing them, and then being ready to print. So yeah, so now we just go to print and we start our two hour timer. So see you in two hours. Now while they start to print, let me tell you about the miniatures we're printing and today's sponsor. Torchlight Models is a miniature figure Patreon that is creating high quality, pre-supported, printable, old school models to play your favorite games. They are providing a new batch of miniatures every single month. This month, the release is The Black Rock Killers, an orc slash black orc fantasy football team which contains 19 pre-supported models ready to print. There are four orc blitzers, six black orcs, two orc throwers, two line orcs, four goblins, and a massive troll. Not only that, if you subscribe today, you'll also get an additional 10 miniatures in their welcome pack, which can be used in any RPG style game system. As I said, all of the miniatures are pre-supported and any of their previous designs can be found on my mini factory. Speaking of which, all tier 2 and tier 3 members of their Patreon not only get their downloadable STLs, they also get exclusive voting rights on upcoming releases, as well as a 25% discount on their My Mini Factory store. The Black Rock Killers are available on their Patreon all throughout April, but there are already whispers of what's coming next. So for all of that and more miniatures every single month, check out the link in the description to Torchlight Models Patreon right now to see just what's on offer. Thank you very much to Torchlight Models for sponsoring today's video and thank you for checking out the links of fantastic supporters of the channel. Well, guess which I forgot to turn the microphone on before recording this section. What I want to say is the prints look amazing. They've come out really well. Not a single fail on any of them. The support clearly supported really well. But the print did take just shy of two and a half hours rather than one hour 49 like the software told us. But it's time to get the second print going and get these cleaned up. So to clean up my prints, I do it the same way every time. I use a plastic razor blade to take them off the bed and then dunk them in some like a dirty sink of isopropyl alcohol. This is like a first bath. The reason I use a dirty sink first is because it gets the bulk of the excess off, which means I don't have to change the larger quantity in my wash station. And then I chuck them in my Elegoo wash station for about 10 minutes. This gives them a really good clean. So basically a washing machine full of alcohol. Then once they've been washed, I soak them in hot water, just from the tap, not boiling water, to soften the resin, which makes getting supports off much easier, and it's less likely to damage the model. After that, I let them air dry and then chuck them in my cure station for about three and a half minutes. Well, um, I've got to go stream now, so hopefully they're done by the time I've finished. <laughs> so all of those printed last night and we're about five hours worth of print time and maybe like 20 to 25 minutes of work time because I've gone ahead and cleaned up the other prints and got them out. Um, so these are all been cured. So now what I've got to do is go around and clean them all up, clean off where the supports were, clean off excess supports, get the feet that fell off repaired and get them stuck to bases ready for priming. So here goes nothing. Twenty-three minutes. Not too shabby. Is that one gonna fall? Okay, twenty-three minutes. Not too shabby. And if you're just here to see just how quick 3D printed miniatures take, you could say around five hours and forty-eight minutes and fifty-nine seconds and twenty-two milliseconds to get an entire Blood Bowl team fully printed, cleaned up, and stuck to bases. But I'm not one to play a new game with unpainted miniatures. That's not my jam. So I am gonna speed paint these as well. So stick around to see how I did that. And then it's time to prime. 
So I'll prime those bad boys up in Halford's Grey Primer, my favourite primer. It's great, it's cheap, and it's got a neutral tone. Then we dry them off on my pink tea tray, and we gaze at their beauty for all of 20 seconds until we dip wash them. That's right, dip wash time. This is something I learned from Midwinter Minis, where whenever I make a thinned down wash for actual painting, I just chuck it into a bucket, right? I chuck all of the excess that I don't use, or any color, doesn't matter what it is, I chuck it into a bucket. And this essentially becomes a dip wash, where we literally take the model and dunk it. <laughs> and this is to add shade to all of the model without having to painstakingly like pin wash or anything like that. So I recommend it, a little bucket for dipping, it's great, it's fun. You make a right mess. So we're dipping each model to give it some contrast because we're gonna be using transparent paints to paint fast, so we need lots of contrast. So I use a larger brush to take off any excess, any really big blobs, but pretty much dunk it, shake it, and then leave it to dry with a hairdryer. Once they're dry, you can see it's captured a lot of the details. It's put a little shadow in all of those recesses, which is really important. So now we're actually going to take a paintbrush to it, and we're going to do a method called dry brushing. This is where we take the brush, dip it in paint, and rub most of it off, and we just, like, slap it all over. We, like, catch all of the flat surfaces, but we don't catch any of the recesses. And we're going to go in with Dawnstone. This is, like, similar to the Halford's Primer. So we're going to take essentially take the brown tint off the surface of the model. And once we've gone over with Dawnstone, we're going to add white to our mix and dry brush this white and aim for the edges. This is to essentially pre-highlight the model. I learned this technique from Dana Howe. She did a lot of, like, underpainting tutorials and stuff. So you can dry brush all the edges of the model to catch the details to bring those out. And then we, when we go over with a transparent paint, like, like this Plague Bearer flesh on an orc, it base paints, shades and highlights the model at the same time. It looks much better than just having a flat primer and then contrast over the top. For the troll, I went for like a yellowy brown rather than a green to make it more like a deformed goblin in my opinion before going in and painting the Under Armour with a black contrast, painting all the leather on all of the models, and then adding a bit of a green shade to the skin just to add a little bit of variance. You can see the timer jumping quite a lot, but that's just because I'm batch painting everything whilst filming this. So I'm painting all of the models one step and then moving on to the next one. For the armor panels, we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to be using a metallic instead. So I'm going to be base coating in black metallic, and then once it's dry, dry brushing it with aluminium to catch those edges exactly the same way. Because we're actually going to go over with the transparent red this time by Tamiyar, clear red. Because I want to get like a candy apple effect. So by going over the metallic, it gives it a real nice shine, which is super cool. It'd be great if I could focus on this part though. <laughs> Once I've painted them all out of focus so there's no other footage of the candy red, they look great. It's just a case of highlighting some details and then giving them another dip wash. This is just to add depth to the candy red again, just add some depth and to the green again and just pull all the colours together. It gives it a brown tint. It gives it a tint all over which drags the colours together. Once that's done, it's time to base them and they're ready for the tabletop. So there you are. Uh, how fast is 3D printing? Well, if you only print models, you can get a full Blood Bowl team or 20 miniatures in around six hours of this size. 
but six hours isn't really six hours because it's five hours of print time and the other hour was spent actually setting up the printer slicing stuff and then cleaning the models and putting them on bases so essentially building the models which in my opinion for just an hour of physical work time is pretty quick the other five hours were just literally just waiting while the models were printing and Obviously, this isn't a scientific experiment. I'm not like calculating every single millisecond, start, stop, start, stop. But it's a, it's a rough guide of being like miniatures on a 32 mil base will print in around two hours of this size. And then clean up is however long you want it to be, depending if you don't care about support, removal and stuff like that. If you don't care about the damage it might cause, then it'll be even quicker. But I thought it was fun to take the miniatures that we printed really quickly and see just how fast I could paint them as well. All in all, I spent around 7 hours painting 20 miniatures, which you might consider fast, you might consider slow. For me, it's pretty quick, it's pretty speedy. Using those quick un underpainting techniques, it was pretty quick. So to have a full Blood Bowl team from start to finish, from resin to miniatures on the tabletop ready to go in 13 hours of, of like work time, but 5 hours of that work time, I was just waiting for them. So really eight hours I physically spent working on these. It's, it's not too bad. I could You could do that in a work day, you know? I mean, not while you're at work, I guess. But So in my opinion, that's, that's pretty quick. And this isn't the fastest printer. It's pretty quick. It's pretty speedy. But it is a domestic printer. It's not like an industrial printer. And there's some printers that print in crazy speeds. Like crazy speeds. And as time goes on, 3D printing is only going to improve, which is going to make things even faster. And the, pro the problem in speed 3d printing is going to be the the, the monkey painting it so <laughs> well there you go i hope you enjoyed this video i want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's tuned in and um if you could you could like the video and you can also leave a comment let me know if there's any other 3d printing aspects you're curious about that i could make a video on then maybe i can or if you just have any questions roughly about this project then do let me know i want to say a massive thank you to torchlight models for sponsoring this video companies like them are amazing they really help support creators like me we get to show off their cool stuff and in return they really support us and we just get to bring you cool stuff and maybe you want to get some blood ball miniatures or you get some rpg miniatures or maybe something they do in the future so thank you to touchlight models again for sponsoring this video and thank you to you if you haven't already please subscribe i want to say a massive thank you to all of these beautiful members that we have that also make the channel possible and without them i couldn't turn the lights on so thank you very much to them Thanks very much to you for watching. Consider becoming a member today. Check out Torchlight Models or otherwise. I love you and I'll catch you next time. Bye now.